Well, you have to have it. That's a lie, my friend. No, not worth it. <laughs> so, this video is a heads-up match of sorts. Granu v Ivy. Yeah, two juggernauts of the game. Four categories, one winner. Actions on Phil. 500. 500. Under the gun, he picks up aces and he raises to 500. Ivy's so baller, he hates aces. Too easy. King Queen for last year's finalist, David Bernstein. And he raises a three bet to 1300. Against an under the gun raiser, I like folding more than I like calling. I hadn't thought of three betting. It's repping huge strength. So much strength that Simon Charette folded ace queen there. Yeah, ace queen is like an insta fold after under the gun, under the gun plus one, start clicking buttons. Call. Cool. Helio Cream calls in the big blind with nines. Cold calling's really tempting there, but I think it sucks when Ivy four bets you, which he's gonna do a lot, and it's pretty possible right now. Ivy does four bet, makes it five and a half thousand total. Bernstein gives it up. Action back on the guy whose name is somehow a mashup of Chino Ream. Ivy's giving him a pretty bad price. Folding's totally cool. Ivy takes it down with a pre-flop 4-bet. Everyone was repping so huge, Ivy accidentally chased him out. You can't share it. Nice hand with Jeff. What a hat. You're just missing that. That's a red. I folded yeah. Jax. Five in a row. No, you did not. <laughs> yeah, I did. No, you did not. Baller. That's a lie. You didn't even you think about that. saying no, Good you ball. didn't there. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even think about it. That's a lie, my friend. <laughs> Baller. Jeff's going, you know we're on TV, right? You shouldn't, like... <laughs> no, he said it's not on TV. What? He said it's not on TV. Well, eventually it will be. <laughs> he's, he's kidding. Now he's I know kidding. you're lying. Thank you. <laughs> Confirmed. That was a good bluff. Baller! <laughs> Jack-10 suited for Negranu. Okay, bro. Yeah, no way Daniel's not playing this hand. He calls in the cutoff. Victor Ramden folds the button. Cody in the small blind. Gives it up. Deeb in the big blind. Queen-9 off. He calls. Two speculative hands. Freddy's extra speculative, but he was getting solid pot odds. Freddy flops top pair. Negranu's up and down. Lichtenberg is still ahead with aces. And Freddy is donk betting. And I think Chewie should come in for a raise on such a wet board. I don't know if Freddy's donking his strong hands, and Daniel loves to peel. And I'm just talking about his love of fruits and vegetables. Lichtenberger calls the 85,000. Okay, yeah, but seriously though, when I say peel, I mean that Daniel likes to call a lot of flops and it makes it really tough to know where you're at against him when he does. Sign language for the hearing impaired. I'm not sure what Daniel's thinking about. He's almost always calling in this spot. All right. There we go. Three way to the turn. And that turn card is a seven, giving Negranu the straight. Check. Freddy's not betting again. Daniel got there, but Freddy and Andrew both picked up flush draws. Action checked to Daniel, and he bets 205,000. See ya, Freddy. Hmm. He's out. Chewie's never folding an over pair in the nut flush draw, so when Daniel bets here, Chewie could easily stick it in. Feeling comfortable right now. See? You can tell by my energy. Relaxed. What does oh. that usually mean? Huh? What do you mean? Dang! <laughs> as soon as I start yapping, he goes in. Oh, man. No way Daniel's folding is such a small raise. Mm, it's tough, 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 tough decision. I'm gonna need a minute. Really? Very difficult to figure this out. Because you check the turn. I guess you do that with the ace high flush, right? Why would you raise me now? I guess you would, yeah. Would you raise the flop with the ace high flush? That's the, that, that's the big debate going on in my head right now. 5.30, right? I don't think I'm going to throw it away, but this is kind of annoying. It's half my stack. Daniel's going through the motions worse than Hangover 3. Well, you have to have it. I don't think I can fold, though. Nice hand, bro. Daniel makes the call. Got it. Showdown. Bit of a nit roll. Oh. All right, hold him. As far as Daniel's concerned, the other lyrics of that song doesn't exist. He's got a Dodger club. Ask and ye shall receive. You called the Deuce of Hearts. Were you hearing me saying Deuce of Hearts? This game is getting crazy. Sorry about uh, that. Will be eliminated in 14th position. Were you here? Did you hear me saying Deuce of Hearts? It's getting crazy how often I'm doing that lately. 
And looks like Mike will be playing against Phil Ivey. He's raised under the gun to 16,000. Mike's hand is king-queen suited. Even though Phil raised under the gun, he's probably still pretty wide. Be decent. <laughs> no. But we can't really go three bad again. We've got a great hand to see a flop. Mike has called in position. Anybody else want to play? Just Dyke Haxton in the big blind. That's the kind of shirt that should come with a free bowl of soup. Looks good on him, though. He faults. So heads up to the flop. Playing Ivy heads up is like playing against two other regular human opponents. Jack-Jack-10 on the flop. Mike with an up and down straight draw. Ivy checks. Mm, no continuation bet. I think usually he's going to check his very, very strong hands and his marginal hands. Either way, I'm fine with a semi-bluffing this. Mike has bet 25,000. And since this is a wet board, I think there's lots Ivy could call with. He calls. So we go to the turn, and Mike pairs his queen. A lot of draws just got there, but we're now beating a 10. Having check called the flop, Ivy will now lead the turn for 60,000. I don't see him leading the turn with a 10. This will be a tight fold, but any two big cards are a big part of Ivy's range, and many, many of those hands are ahead. Ace-King, Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack. Shall I continue? Well, Mike clearly thinks he's behind. He's folded. Like I said, tight fold. Gotta be a history-based decision. Ivy had nines. Man, he got you guys good on that one. Remember when I was all like, call, he never has it here, and you guys were like, no, we want to fold. Well, look, and look at Mike's sad little face. Live with that. Negreanu with deuces. Daniel likes to play. He calls the raise of 30,000. Carry cats. Folds. Chidwick's out. Bryn Kenny folds the small blind. Mustafa Kanet in the big. Gets out of the way. So the two chip leaders go heads up to the flop. What do you think Daniel's thinking about? 6-5-3. Well, Daniel does not have a set, but this is a flop he can convince himself his deuces are good on. 28,000. Ivan Luka makes a continuation bet. It's a very small continuation bet. Small C bets are in right now, but it does make it very easy for your opponent to float you. Remember, this event is playing with a shot clock. Every player has 30 seconds per decision. Daniel decides to race. Makes it 95,000. Now, this isn't going to get many better hands to fold, but he can fold out hands that have decent equity, like two over cards. Well, he's going to get called by Luca with his over pair. The raise by Daniel might also just buy him a cheap showdown. Three of spades on the turn, powering the board. Luca now an 86% favorite. He checks. Negreanu checks behind. An eight on the river. Lucas still ahead with nines. Check. That looks like a check to induce to me. Pretty sure Luca's confident he's got the best hand. 284,000 in the pot. Daniel bets ridiculously big, 400K. Wow. And Luca faults. That was not the bet he was trying to induce. Daniel's reputation earns him a win there. Bluffs like that from him are few and far between. Action on Phil Ivey. King, queen offsuit. Queen. Good even under the gun. He raises to 40,000. That's a fold from Peter Chan. Fabian Quas is out. Ace three for Mike McDonald. He folds. Dan Cates has King Jack of Spades. Dominated. He calls on the button. Quark gives up the small blind. Cool. Low calls in the big blind with 10 6. It's actually fine with the odds he was getting. So funny. Jungle Man can't even look at Ivy. Three way to the flop. King Jack 3, top two for Cates. Check. Low has a total bagalino. He checks. Ivy could lose a lot of chips here. He continues with top pair for 65,000. K 
Tates could smooth call this, or he could raise, knowing Ivy raised under the gun, and this is going to hit him a lot. Looks like Cates is raising. Jungle Man makes it 165,000. And it's time for Low to go. Shorty got low, 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 low. Low, low, low. He folds. Now, Jungle Man probably doesn't do this with Ace King, so he's either got two pairs and sets or some kind of big combo draw. Most folks ain't folding this to a single raise from an aggressive player. Ivy Spot is tougher than that math problem from Goodwill Hunting. Wow, Ivy folds. My boy's wicked smart. Daniel Negreanu with Jack 8 suited on the button. Daniel's getting okay pot odds, and he's in position. He might call even faster if he knew Seidel had aces. Both blinds have folded. Play the rush. TJ taught me this trick. Back in the old days. Back in the old days, before all this crazy technology like Discmans and VCRs. Top set for Seidel. And he checks it. Seidel getting pretty tricky here. Gives up the lead. Shikerchi shouldn't bite. Okay. And Negreanu checks behind. I think Eric's check there is going to cost him. Whoa. A jack on the turn. Negreanu with two pair. This could get expensive for Daniel. Daniel's got two pair and he's drawing deader than zombie Walt Disney. Seidel checks again. Shikerchi with a gut shot bets 60,000. Somehow Shikerchi's live despite having the worst hand. Daniel calls with his two pair. And Seidel sticks in a raise, makes it 225,000 total. Shikurchi quickly folds. Seidel's raise looks super strong, and even though Daniel has two pair, from his perspective, he's beating absolutely no value raises. I don't know, maybe I should go with TJ. Fill up and lose. He lets it go. <laughs> yeah. Great lay down from Daniel Negreanu. Seidel wins a decent sized pot. Hard for him to have one pair there. Either has like a monster draw, or I'm trying to <laughs> just uh... yeah, not worth it. I think Eric lost out on a lot of value after checking that flop. I think that's part of what made Daniel so sure about his read. So they'll go at it again. This time Ivy with a ten and a nine offsuit. Here comes the flop. There is a ten there. Well, and an interesting flop too. A ten three deuce. So Polk with a straight draw and Ivy with top pair. Ivy checks quickly. Now, Doug can bet here, or he can elect to take a free card Check. for his gut shot straight. Checks behind Ivy. The turn, a two of hearts. Action on Phil. Bidding 75. 75,000, just a little over half of the pot. Doug can quite comfortably call here with his ace high. He's going to be ahead most, not most of the time, but a lot of the time he's going to be ahead. And he's also drawing to an ace or a five. Call. Makes the call in position. The river is a six of clubs, so Ivy's pair of tens are best. Action is on, Phil. Can he get Doug Polk to call here with ace high, depending on the amount? He could. Yeah, it depends what... You know, how weak Doug uh, sees Ivy as being and what the size of this bet is. Can't really bet too much. And he's bet the pot. Betting 200. That's almost the pot. So Ivy's taken the line that I want to represent a bluff, basically, to get called by ace high. This is the sort of thinking that these guys are doing. Like, he's put Doug Polk on ace high. Ivy said, I've got top pair, I want to get a call, I'm going to bet the maximum to make it look like I'm actually trying to steal the pot. And Doug Polk hasn't moved, so Phil Ivy's instincts once again, no surprise. Clearly making Doug Polk think about a call. You can almost hear a pin drop in the room. Doug Polk really considering this call. You're right, Joe. Raised to 580. Wow, this is a surprise. He's made a raise here. So he's turned his hand into a bluff, basically. And Phil Ivey hasn't moved, but look at those eyes. 
<laughs> now, it's actually very simple for Ivy. There's no use raising. He's only going to get called by a better hand. Okay? He believes he's in front. If he does believe he's in front, he can just call and see what happens, right? Um, if he believes he's behind, he can raise now to try and get his opponent to fold. But I think Ivy will just call. Well, Ivy was caught by surprise there. I didn't mean about 200, I meant about 175. Ivy speaking out loud a little bit. You don't mm. get that very often from Phil. He just gave up a lot of information there. But I wonder whether that was deliberate to try and get a reaction from Polk. You can never tell, right? He said, just to be clear, but he said that I meant to bet 175,000. Trying to elicit a reaction from Doug, Doug Polk, perhaps, a tell of some yeah, kind. Yeah, I think it was a pretty futile attempt, but maybe he's just being honest. Has he got to put the chips in the pot or no when you race? What's the rule? Bits of five, maybe. You can just say it. You can just say it without putting the chips in. Phil Ivey's just asking and clarifying a few tournament rules. As we mentioned earlier, Joe, when they travelled, those rules changed, so you've got to clarify occasionally. Yeah, but now that was definitely his searching for information there. OK. He, that was... He knows that this is now playing poker, right? This is playing with people's minds right so now. So you were right the first time. Don't trust them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't trust poker yeah, players. Yeah, he knows. He Not at the table anyway. Them. Confused, frustrated. <laughs> the tug of war is back, and even Phil Ivey gets it. It's great. Can he do it? Can he convince himself to call? He wants to, he doesn't want to. Do I? Don't I? Every poker player in the world faces this, even Phil Ivey. Okay. There it is. He makes the call, so... He will win a big pot. He almost looked a bit surprised yeah, he, there. He was, he was resigned to the fact that he's actually lost the hand, to be honest. So he was surprised that he won. Negrano on the button has 10-9 of diamonds. Negrano's loving life right now on the button with this hand. He's really thinking about it. He's confused with this 5x open out of Shlomi. But he makes the call. Both blinds will fold. So three players will see a flop. No six for Bonyardi, but a nine high flop could get Daniel in trouble here. Daniel looked a big speculative pre-flop. And now he's picked up top pair. He might get in trouble. Shlomi continues. He's made it 15-25. It's a pot-sized bet. No slow playing for Shlomi. 5x pre-flop, pot on the flop. Daniel's still not convinced. He wants to call. But should he call? Daniel has a tough time folding pairs, and this is top pair. He should probably fold, but I don't see it happening. He does make the call. A big pot is brewing. No real threat out there to Shlomi's kings. Shlomi can't be too concerned about this turn card. 21-25. This time he decides to make it a little bit cheaper for Negrano. He went full pot on the flop, right around half pot on the turn. Surely this is where Daniel lets it go. Uh, Daniel is trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And he makes the call. He's not entirely convinced yet. Again, this river really doesn't change much. The only hand this helps is 6-7 or 8-9. And Shlomi only fires out a third pot on this river. He gives Negrano a fair price to make this call. He's getting 4-1 to one on his money. Well, let's see if Daniel can get away from this. Daniel is determined Angel Small River Bet is a value hand that Kid Poker can't beat. Although it's hard for him to rep a hand, he's bumping it up. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aces or kings? Can I say that or is that illegal? Heads up. I can say what he has, but not what I have. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking aces or kings. <laughs> you think right. Daniel really pulled the trigger correctly on that one. And Shlomi's now thinking, if you've read me for aces or kings, surely you can beat aces or kings. I have to fold. If I show one, do I have to show all? No. Okay. okay. I can show one? You can show one. I can show one if I want to? I don't feel like it. Never mind. <laughs> I, got, I don't have a good one to show. Great start for Daniel. Almost a double float there, and then a bluff on the river, which got the job done. Negrano wasted no time pulling out the tricks from his playbook. Ace of Kings was good, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what I thought he had, but not that I could beat it. <laughs>